Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome. Is the baby here? No. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. Good morning and welcome. Good to have you here today. We're pretending it's Valentine's Day today, so happy Valentine's Day to you. We are celebrating it a few days early. Um, I really enjoyed in that particular countdown that we use at the one minute time frame, this voice from heaven comes and calls us to attention. And I asked Aiden, is that God talking? And he said, no, it's Todd talking. <laughs> I don't think it's either, but it gets our attention for sure. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for being here today, and I just pray you have a wonderful time as we celebrate the Lord together this morning in this place. So thanks for coming and, and being a part. Uh, we have announcements and so forth in your bulletin this morning to check out of different activities happening. We do invite you to our, our coffee fellowship. We're having it early this month to coordinate with Valentine's Day. So come on over and enjoy some snacks. And some of you remember to bring your wedding pictures or at least pictures from a while back that are over there. And uh, it's just fun to look at those as well. So you're all invited to join us for coffee fellowship right after church this morning. Uh, and uh, as you look into the week's events, there's uh, various activities, uh, the regular activities that are going on and, and all of that as we move through the week. A uh, couple of things to share. One of those, you know, we, when we, we rejoice together and we, we mourn together, we get to rejoice together because um, Emily Robbins, Emily Miller Robbins, had her little baby boy um, <laughs> yesterday. Thank you. Ryan Russell Robbins, RRR. -R -R. So there you go. So as they are back around at church, we'll congratulate them. Um, and also, everything went really well, though. So just congratulations to the whole family there with the new, new addition. Um, also, a couple of things as we're planning and lining out uh, some of our uh, cleanup efforts on the church grounds and repair efforts on the parsonage. Uh, we are going to have a sign-up sheet next Sunday. We, we want to have our board meeting this week. We've got to go over some things and just talk about some stuff and organizing all of that. And so next Sunday, we're going to have a sign-up sheet with a date of when we'd like to start the cleanup anyway. Um, and uh, we'll just see how many are able to participate in that. And also, we, with our insurance company and working with the repairs and the parsonage, we have to get a, a couple of different estimates on that. Um, we have gotten one, and if you have worked with a contractor that you think is really good and fair and you would recommend them, if you could talk to Dave, and there's Dave right there, talk to Dave after church and just give him the name of that company or that person uh, that you would recommend so we can get a couple of more uh, bids. We would like to get a couple of more uh, bids on the parsonage and the fence and some of those things that were damaged. So that will help out a lot. And so those things are all in the works. And so just continue to pray for that as we work through all of those things and getting things repaired and back uh, in shape here at Camp Creek Church. We want to welcome all Ronkies with us today. Some of you from a few years back would know. Ali Ronke, as he was involved here at Camp Creek Church years ago when he was at the University of Oregon, he and his wife, Renoy, were married in this very place a number of years ago, and so he is over in our, uh, our nation um, for the National Prayer Breakfast, I believe, in Washington, and so if you can stay after, we'll be fellowshipping next door and folks can visit with you, but it's so good to have you with us, uh, Ali Ronke from Africa with us today, so we praise the Lord for that. And I'm look yeah, yeah. Thank you. I was going to say, I'm looking for Dick and Karen Chase, and Dick and Karen Chase are right behind Ollie Ronke. I could have been blind. Anyway, <laughs> welcome. I heard that you guys were, were here, and we're so glad with Theta today. Welcome to you as well. I love this. You know, I love to be able to look back and, and see different ones that have been a part of our church family over the years and are still connected. Praise God. So welcome to all of you. Thank you for being here today. And there's somebody else I'm missing. So I look out there, you know. Um, 
Uh, anyway, good, good. Well, as this morning as we come to worship the Lord, as, as we do each Sunday, we want to pray for our village missionaries that are our spotlight for this particular um, week. And we're, we're praying for Pastor Mike and Suzanne Immis, who serve the Lord in French Gulf, uh, California. And we want to lift their church family and their ministry up to the Lord this morning. And we want to pray for our time at Camp Creek Church today and our time to uh, celebrate love today as we join together. So if you'll join me as we pray, let's just quiet our hearts before the Lord and lift up our service to him this morning. Uh, Father God, we are grateful uh, to be here today. We are thankful that you have called us to come as a community of believers to worship you, to come together from all of our different um, places, Lord, and all of our different responsibilities, all of our different ages, all of our different families, Lord, we come together to worship you in this place today, and it's an amazing thing, and we give you praise for that opportunity. And Father, we realize as we're here worshiping you at Camp Creek Church, there are people all around our nation, all around our globe that are coming together in worship of you on this Lord's Day. And so we are just part of that huge uh, universal church family all around us, and we're grateful to be a part of that. And Lord, as we come together today, we do think of our, our own mission organization, which we've been involved with for many years, Village Missions, and serving you in these rural places in the United States and Canada. And so, Lord, we, we want to just be faithful in remembering these couples and these families that serve and these churches. So today, Lord, we are uh, mindful of Pastor Mike and Suzanne as they serve you at French Gulch Community Church in California. And Lord, they ask us to pray um, that as they share your word, that people would find the truth, those nuggets of truth in your word. Uh, they ask us to pray for those uh, that are close to trusting you and their the attending church and all of that, Lord, that they would come to that place of really realizing who you are and accepting you as Savior and Lord. We do pray for Pastor Mike as he's recovering from congestive heart failure. We ask you to bring strength and health to him and uh, that he would regain his strength. And thank you. He's back to preaching again and teaching their Wednesday Bible study group. And then, Lord, they ask that we pray that you would be glorified in everything that they do on their mission field of French Gulch. And, Lord, as so many times, we can echo those prayers for our own church here at Camp Creek. Lord, we do pray that you would be glorified in all that we are doing here, not only what happens on these grounds of Camp Creek Church, but also what happens throughout the week as your church is scattered all over the community, that you would do a mighty work, and we're grateful for that. And Lord, today we do just celebrate. We celebrate the season of love. We celebrate the, the wonderful relationships that we can have together, whether it be as, as married couples, whether just uh, friends and neighbors and church family, that Lord, we can come together and celebrate that love that originates with you. And Father, thank you that you brought some folks to, uh, to church today that have been a part of our church uh, years ago for Ole Ronke, for, for Dick and Karen, for, for Fida being with us today as well. Lord, we're just glad to hear that. And Lord, you're increasing your church with the wonderful news of, of uh, Thomas and Emily's new little baby. And so, Father, yeah, we just thank you for all of that as well. We give you praise. And Lord, now, uh, just turn our focus to you. Uh, you are the one that loves us so much, and we just want to be able to love you back a little bit this morning as we worship you. We pray all these things now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So our worship focus this morning as we look out into uh, the, this time together is just living in, in the love of God. Our focus today is on his love for us, and we're going to be looking at that a little bit later, the greatest love and how, as, as he loves us, as he loves you, as he loves me, then we can share that love with all those ones around us in a very special way. So we're going to sing some songs about love and how God loved us and, and all of those things. And so our, our worship team is going to lead us this morning. Looks like we got a full, almost a full do. group. I can come over and play that keyboard, Ray. Come on, buddy. You know, as long as you do when the saints go marching in, I can play that. Anyway, all right, no <laughs> with one hand. There you go. Well, but let's, let's stand let's, and praise yes, the let's Lord. stand together. Well, come all you weary, come all you thirsty. 
thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Welcome all your sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness and find what you're looking for. kingdom. to the law. 
Good morning. This morning's scripture reading comes from the first, the book of 1 John, chapter 3, starting at verse 16 through the end of the chapter. This is how we know what God is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have the confidence before God and we receive from him everything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit that he gave us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning and just responding to that scripture today. Father, we thank you for your word to us. We thank you, Father, that you, you shower your love upon us in so many amazing ways. And we know what love is by knowing who you are, Lord. And I pray this morning that as we um, draw close to you, Lord, in our time together of worship today and as we study your word this morning, as we have opportunity to fellowship with one another after church. Lord, all of these things would just draw us into a greater understanding, a deeper understanding of your love for us. And then, Father, not only to, to bask in that love, which I think is an important thing for us to do, but also, Lord, to, to act on that love that you have shared with us by loving those around us. And Father, it seems like every, every day we have opportunities to do that, and sometimes maybe we don't do it as well as we could or should, but Lord, you have given us so many opportunities in our community and just around us to love others with that love that you have given to us. And Father, we know that that love that you have given to us is an amazing love, a sacrificial love that took your Son, the Lord Jesus, to the cross to die there in our place, to take away our sin and shame, to give us new life in you, to give us that hope of heaven one day, to be in your very presence. And so, Lord, we thank you for that, and it is all because of your love for us, and we give you praise. Lord, you, you are a good God, and, and we are grateful for that. We're grateful for the many ways that we see your goodness in our lives, really on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. And as we take the time to, to chart those out, it's amazing, Lord, how good you are each and every day to us. And so, Lord, we celebrate your love, we celebrate your goodness, and we just do it all in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. <laughs>
Jeff, you have been so, so good with every breath that I am able. I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good with every breath that I have made. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing Father, I do thank you again for your goodness. And I think we can all recount some of that goodness uh, this past week in our lives. Thank you for that. Thank you for those opportunities to experience your goodness in very real ways. And then, Lord, now we ask as we open your word together uh, here in the church sanctuary, our, our kids uh, during their junior church time, that, Lord, your goodness and your love would just speak powerfully to us this morning. Jump off the pages of your word into our lives and our hearts, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So we do have junior church this morning, so those of you that are uh, in the uh, Three years old, up through the fifth grade. Debbie's back there already uh, to take you on over for your junior church time. So have a good time there, and you'll be back at the end of the church service. And thank you uh, to, to Ray and the team this morning. Ray and Janie, who celebrated, celebrating love, they celebrated their 54th wedding anniversary yesterday. And... and Ray, just so you know, I know some stories now about you that I didn't know before from your wife. It's great. So be careful. <laughs> you did, you did. But Ray, thank you for leading the team here while you're here. They're off to Hawaii tomorrow, yes? And so may you have a great time there. And we have... Uh, Dave and Jessica Lacey, and they'll be joining up the team here to lead us in, in music starting next week. So praise God for the gifts and talents he's given the folks here uh, to do music for us, because you certainly don't want me up here. Uh, that is one of those things. Our first church we went to, where Shelly and I went down to Fairview, there was nobody that played the piano. There was nobody that did any of that stuff. And it was especially interesting over at McKinley, as I would lead the you know, the singing. <laughs> I know. Imagine that. We've come a long way, baby. And I'm so glad we have. <laughs> but, but, and they came, they had a pastor before us. They were an older couple um, that were retired uh, uh, when, from the church there. And he played the piano apparently beautifully and sang. Well, they didn't get that on the next one that came through. So anyway, my wife sings beautifully, but I don't. And anyway... So thank you for all those who are musical here and bring your musical talents to help lead our church as we sing and praise the Lord together. Well, there was a husband and wife who came for counseling, marriage counseling, after 30 years of marriage. Uh, and when asked what the problem was, the wife went into a passionate, painful tirade listing every problem that they had ever had in the 30 years they had been married. And she went on and on and on and on uh, about um, all of these things, unmet needs that she had endured throughout their marriage. Finally, after allowing this to go on for a, a, a sufficient length of time, the therapist got up from where he was seated. He walked around the desk, and after asking the wife to stand... He embraced her and kissed her quite passionately. Uh, the woman shut up, uh, quietly sat down as though in a daze, and the therapist then turned to the husband and said, this is what your wife needs at least three times a week. Can you do this? The husband thought for a moment and replied, well, I can drop her off here on Mondays and Wednesdays, <laughs> but on Fridays, I think. So I... <laughs> There you go. 
the joke of the day, okay? Well, as you well know, Valentine's will be here in just a few days. And may I be one of the first to wish you a happy Valentine's Day, however you're going to celebrate it and, and all of that. I pray it's a great day for you. Uh, in America, Valentine's is a day of love. That's traditionally what we look at. It's a day for remembering our vows of love made uh, to each other. It's a day for those who are desperately trying to win the affection of another by enticing them with flowers and gifts and all of those good things. We recognize it as a, as, a, as a day of love. But as we say that, what, you know, what is love? You know, trying to define love can be difficult uh, in our society today. And that's what I want to talk about with you this morning as we look to Valentine's Day and we do celebrate the, the love that we can share with, with other people in, in various ways. We want to look at love from, from God's perspective this morning and look at love and how, what does God mean when he says he loves us. And I, I've said this before, and I believe it's very true. We use the word love in our culture from anything that's, you know, very deep, like, you know, I love my wife, I love Shelly, I use that same word love, but I also love barbecued chicken. <laughs> not her chicken, though. No, not the ones we... I should have said barbecued something else, didn't I? <laughs> anyway, you see what I mean? I use the same word to, to talk about something really big in my life to something that, yes, I do enjoy barbecue chicken. Well, the Bible has some different words for love um, that I think makes it a little more clear. And I want to look at this with you this morning. I have a slide up here to look at and kind of talk through with you. Um, there, there are even more than four loves in, in the Bible, but I just limited it to these four. You've probably heard of them before. Um, the one that we don't talk about much is that first one over there called storge, uh, and that's a, a familial type of fondness and love. Um, eros, we hear about, that's like that passionate love. That's how the therapist kissed that woman or whatever. You know, that's a romantic kind of love, and the word used for that is eros. And then there's... Uh, Philia or philea, which is a friendship type of love that we share with other people. And then we have, I believe, what is the strongest word for love, which is agape. And a lot of us are familiar with that, an agape love. And this diagram, I kind of liked it because it showed these four, but it also showed how they intersect. Because really, you think about it, they do intersect. We have different types of love for, for different people. And so in the Bible, when you look at the original language and you look at how God loved us, the word for that is, is an agape love. It is a love that is the strongest type of love. It is an unconditional love. So I just wanted to show that picture to you this morning and talk about it a little bit. But as we think of God's love for us, we realize that it does fall into that category of, of agape love. Uh, and this morning we want to discover the characteristics of this type of love and learn what it looks like in our, in our daily lives. So I've entitled uh, today's lesson simply, The Greatest Love. And our text is this, uh, a section in what Dee Dee shared with us in our scripture reading this morning. So I'd like you to join me there. It's in the book of First John. Isn't it interesting that John 3.16, we all know that verse, you know, for God so loved the world, gave his one only son. Those that believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting or eternal life. And then 1 John 3.16 also focuses on the love of God. So we're looking at 1 John, which is back almost to the end of your Bibles. Clear back there. There are three short letters by the Apostle John. And we're looking at the first one, 1 John chapter 3. And verse 16. So if you find that, and then if you want to jot down any notes, there is a spot on the bulletin to jot down some notes this morning on what we're talking about in this idea of the greatest love and what it means to you and me. The first point I want to share with you as we look at this passage is that the greatest love does this. The greatest love that agape love, that unconditional love, makes sacrifices for others. 
It makes sacrifices for others. And we see this right in that very first uh, verse in our text, 1 John 3.16. It says this, We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. Boy, there's a lot right in that, isn't there? You know, knowing what real love is is dependent upon on Jesus. And Jesus shared the essence of love in John 15, 13. You don't have to go there, but I've, I've got it up here for you. It says, we've heard this before, Jesus is speaking and says, Greater love hath no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friend. So again, that great love, it's a sacrificial type love. It's a love that's willing to, to give up a lot of things for someone that we care about. And our Savior, we know Jesus, didn't just say this in order to impress his disciples. He literally acted it out. He acted out those words when he went to the cross. Just as verse 16 says, he gave up his life for us. And and Jesus died on the cross so that we might live. And I know that we've heard that before. We've heard that over and over and over again. It can become something that is often commonplace to us. But my prayer is that it never becomes commonplace, that it will always impress us when we, when we see a cross and we realize that Jesus died for me there because he loved me so much, he made that sacrifice for me. So Jesus sacrificed himself in that place uh, for us that we might live. And he did this because he considered those who believe in him as his friends. And he became the sacrifice for us at that point to take our place in death uh, when we should be the ones to die for our sins. I think that's um, amazing that, that Jesus made that exchange. You know, I was the one for my sin who should have died for it. And Jesus said, no, I will take your place. I will do this. And he did that. And he came, comes around to each one of us here and he says the very same thing. I will die for you on that cross. And he did that for us. So Jesus sacrificed himself for us. And the very word sacrifice portrays the meaning of agape love. The word sacrifice means something given. Something given for someone else. So when we love someone unconditionally, it means that we will sacrifice or give up our own welfare that another person will gain. And that's something I'm sure as you love people and you and, and those of you that are married here today and with relationships with your spouse, you have loved them in that way and in that shape and in that form uh, and have, have sacrificed in that way and, and, and they have sacrificed for you in ways that you might not even know. And this is the kind of love that we're supposed to remember and practice each and every day of the year, not just on Valentine's Day, for sure. Um, And then look back at 1 John 3.16 again. Look back at that verse. The last half of the verse says, So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. We should give up our lives for them. Um, and, And giving up one's life is about sacrifice. Now, we can make sacrifices in different ways. There's many times, most of the time, you will not be called upon to give your life, okay? You may be, and there are ones that have given their lives for another. We know that in in a lot of different situations. But most of us will not be called to do that, but we are still called to sacrifice. And think about it. We sacrifice our time. You know, our time is, is a big deal, really. And we, we know in our society today where we have all kinds of stuff that makes life easier, we're busier than ever. I still find that very interesting to, to understand. <laughs> we have stuff that does stuff for us <laughs> by just the push of a button, yet we're busier than ever. Um, but we sacrifice our time. Someone we love needs something. It's going to take some time to do that, sacrifice that. We sacrifice our resources, the things that we have, whether that be our finances or, you know, possessions that we have. We're, able, we're willing to give those uh, to others that they might benefit from them. 
And, and I think ultimately we sacrifice ourselves, and I'm not meaning giving our life in that sense, but just being able to uh, put it all out there on the line to help someone out when they need it. And as we do these things, we show love to another person in the name of Christ. And I think it's just so important. As Christians, when we do these things, we do them for the glory of the Lord. And when we show someone the love of Jesus, I think we find great fulfillment in our lives. And I think probably all of you could attest to that. A time when you gave something up. Now that sounds like, well, if I gave something up, then I am going to be lacking. <laughs> How many times have you found that when you gave something up, you come away richer. You come away with more than you had before. And that's God. That's one of those God things that we say, you know, where God does a work and, and we should be less because I've given this up, but God makes up for it in so many other ways. And so we, we want to be able to give those things to, the, to other people and feel that fulfillment. And so, though it may sound odd, we actually find joy in laying down our life for others in sacrificial ways that can bring joy to us. So that's one thing about the greatest love, is it will make sacrifices. Here's the second thing I want to share with you today I see in this, packet, in this passage. The greatest love is shown by actions, not just by words, okay? There are the actions, not just words. Look with me, continue in 1 John 3. Pick up at verse 17. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth so we will be confident when we stand before God. So if we have the resources to give to those in need, but we keep them to ourselves, how does the love of God abide in us? Is kind of what that is talking about. And over in 1 John 4, and you, you don't have to turn there. I, I think I have it up here for you. But in 1 John chapter 4, and looking at verses 20 and 21, it says this, If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. So that's really strong, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's sometimes hard to, to grab a hold of there, that as we love our brothers and sisters, the love of God is shown. And if we're not loving them, it says, how can God's love be in you? If we refuse to help those in need, but we say that we know God and love him, according to 1 John, we're lying. <laughs> and um, we're, we're not practicing the truth. Uh, it, it's, it's important to God that we love not simply with our words, but also with our actions. And I think that's so important because it's easy to say the words. And I think it's interesting that little phrase that rolls off our tongue so, so quickly, I love you, there's very few letters in any of that, is there? I love you. It's pretty easy to say. None of us struggle with pronouncing any of those words. <laughs> we say them easily. But God is saying here, it's not just saying those words. And I do believe, especially here talking to you know, couples here today, I do believe it's important to say, I love you, you know, to to your spouse, to tell them that. It's good to put that um, into words. Shelly and I have a little thing that we do, and it's, it's, it's just it's a little bit funny, but it puts the word love in there. Off, uh, whenever we talk to each other or even sometimes text each other, when we're done, we both say, love you, bye. Love you, bye. It's just like, it's like one word, love you, bye. But we mean, you know, I do love you. I do love you, and, and bye. We'll see you in a while, you know. This is one thing I heard, though, that I think, those things are fun to do and to keep that love going. But I did hear that it's really important to actually put all three words together. Because if you love you, love you, is fine. But to look at someone and say, I love you, that takes a little more. I encourage you to do that, to be able to do that. And we know love is, is not just the, the romantic piece and that love we share with the spouse, 
but even as friends, we can say, you know, I love you. I care about you. To be able to put those words into, to say them, for one thing, is important. I'm not discounting the words. But then to show that you love someone, because I'm sure we've all had people that constantly have told us they love us, but their actions were totally different. It didn't, you know, pan out. Whether it, was, whether it wasn't a relationship, whether it was a, a family type of thing, a parental thing with children or whatever, you heard the words, but boy, they weren't true. And so God's saying here, it is so important to show love by actions, not just by our words. I think both are important. Do both uh, and show that love both ways. We've all heard that actions speak louder than words, and they, they really do. Uh, they show forth in a tremendous way. And God followed up on his words of love with actions of love. And he, he wants us to do the same. And as we do, it says that we know that we're God's children. Isn't that interesting? It confirms the fact that you're a child of God. If you're loving other people and you're acting on that love, you're showing others and you're confirming in your life, yeah, I guess God is in my life because I'm able to do this. And I'm able to do something that only God can help me to do. So that great love should be shown by actions, not just by words. And here's the last one we want to talk about this morning. Point number three from this passage is that the greatest love, the greatest love can be fully enjoyed as we believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus is the key. Jesus is always the perfect Sunday school answer, right? How many times have you asked a question in Sunday school and whether it applied or not, the child raised his hand and said, Jesus, <laughs> you know, it always seems to fit. But I believe in our lives that Jesus is the key. Jesus is the answer. Jesus makes all the difference in the world. We see this in 1 John 3. Continue on with me, verses 20 through 24. It says, even if we feel guilty... God is greater than our feelings, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if, if we don't feel guilty, we can come to God with bold confidence. And we will receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey him, and we do the things that please him. And this is his commandment. We must believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. Those who obey God's commandments remain in fellowship with him, and he with them. And we know he lives in us because the spirit he gave us lives in us. So I, as I look at these verses, and in these verses I think is the key to being rid of guilt because we all can have guilt in our lives. Um, I see the key to being rid of guilt. I see the key to having boldness in prayer. And I see the key to receiving answers to prayer and being able to love others with that unconditional agape love. And that key is right there in verse 23. Look at that again with me. We must believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. That is the center focus as we look at that passage, believing in the name of Jesus. And as we believe in Jesus, as we come to know him as our Savior and Lord, he forgives our sins. I mean, we know that happens. That relieves our guilt. It he forgives that sin. He can take that away. And when we do something bad, we do feel guilty about it. You know, the Holy Spirit kind of convicts us of that. So we, um, he forgives our sins. He answers our prayers. And he empowers us to love like he does. There's no way I can love unconditionally. I always have conditions on I'll love you if you treat me a certain way. I'll love you if you're, you know, nice to me. I'll love you if you give me something, you know. It's always conditional. But with God, he gives us that unconditional love that we can love no matter what. And the way that we show our love toward God is to demonstrate our love and obedience to Jesus, to follow him. Um, 1 John 4.10 says this, This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as atoning sacrifice for our sins. God loved us first. And he set the example uh, for us to follow. And we cannot love until we know what love 
truly is. We cannot know what love really is until we know the one who first loved us. I think it's so important to have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. He set that example in our lives. How many of you have had examples in your life ever? Any of you had examples? Hopefully all of us have had some sort of example. We realize that some serve as bad examples, <laughs> you know, and, and they are examples nonetheless. But I hope all of us in one way, shape, or form have had someone or maybe more than someone, many someone, who were good examples to you. Maybe they were a good example of how to do a job correctly. You know, we often have that in training programs where someone's learning to, to be something. They're going through training and, and internships or whatever you want to call them so that they be, can become good at what they're supposed to do. So they look to good examples to set that up. And in the same way, maybe in your homes, you know, you had parents that were good examples to you, good examples of loving and caring. And so we look to those examples. Jesus is that ultimate good example of what it means to love. And that's why it says here that he loved us. And then he sent his son as that sacrifice for our sin. So he is our example, and we really can't love apart from him. We learn love by the example that God gave us in his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus gave the ultimate example um, of unconditional love when he died on the cross. And when we accept what he did for us, and we experience that forgiveness of our sins, then we will reciprocate that love uh, to others. And we will know how to forgive when we ourselves have been forgiven. We will know how to love when we ourselves have been loved. And that is the important thing to remember. So the greatest love, the greatest love, as we've discovered this morning in this short passage in the book of 1 John, the greatest love makes sacrifices for others. Are you involved in that? Am I involved in that? Making sacrifices for others other people. The greatest love is shown by actions, not just by words. And the greatest love can be fully enjoyed as we believe in Jesus Christ. So my question to you as we get ready to go this morning is, have you experienced this great love in your own life? And I hope you have. I hope you've experienced it to the full extent. But if not, please consider believing in Jesus today. Believe in him. Jesus said, as our verse says here, that the one who believes in me will live even though they die. And so we want to have that belief in Jesus Christ. Jesus, and you've heard it before, and you're going to hear it again, <laughs> he died on that cross for you and me because he loved us so much. And his word tells us that as we come to him and we believe in what he did, and we trust in what he did, and we, we ask his forgiveness for our sin, that he comes into our lives. He, he enters in, and that relationship with God that was meant to be from the beginning is restored through Jesus Christ. So I pray today that you know him as your Lord and Savior, and if you don't, consider it. If you have questions, I'd love to talk to you about what it means to know Jesus Christ and to experience that love in your life. And those of us, I believe, who know Jesus, we, we do know the meaning of unconditional love. We often speak love with our mouths to one another. And so today, I encourage all of us to put those words into action each and every day. So as we say, I love you to someone, and I encourage you to do that, back that up with how you treat them, how you care for them, things you may do for them is an important part. God loved us so much, and he wants us to love others with that same love. Will you join me as we pray? Father God, we thank you for your word to us today. Lord, we are just so grateful that you teach us and you speak to us through your word, the Bible. Thank you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can illuminate these words that are sometimes hard to understand. And Lord, I pray today that, that most of all, we would just understand your love for us, how much you love us. And Lord, I know as we're here today, there, there are probably uh, several here who maybe just don't feel worthy of your love. 
And you know what? None of us are. But Father, you loved us anyway. You said it, and then you did something about it when you sent your son Jesus. I pray that all of us here will experience that amazing love of Jesus Christ in our lives this morning. And then, Lord, we'll share it. We'll, we'll share it with others throughout the week. We'll say the words of love, and we'll do the actions of love. And we'll love as you loved us. So we give you the praise, we give you the glory today in the precious name of Jesus, the one who is love. Amen. Amen. Well, we are going to continue celebrating love next door. For those of you who can stay, there's a, all kinds of goodies laid out over there and many of them brought by you. I want to thank Carla. did a wonderful job setting everything up for our Valentine celebration. We can give her a hand. It looks beautiful in there. And it's all nice and red and pink as it should be for Valentine's Day, right? And so we're going to celebrate together over there if you can stay uh, afterwards this morning. Um, next week we begin the season of Lent, the season of Lent. And so I'm really excited uh, to begin a new series with you starting next week and that whole idea of uh, preparation. Again, just if some of you are wondering what is Lent, again, it's not Lent. It's not the little stuff you find in your pocket, you know. It's not that, it is Lent, L-E-N-T. I'm going to have a, a whole uh, a bunch of papers if you want to read all about Lent, but basically just like Advent prepares us for Christmas, it gets our hearts ready for the celebration on December 25th, Lent prepares us for Easter and that celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So part of Lent has some darkness in it because we look at sin and we look at death we look at hard things in light of what Jesus did for us on the cross. So in the midst of the darkness that sometimes is there, there's the light of Jesus and the message of the gospel. I look forward to sharing some things about Lent with you beginning next Sunday. And Lent officially begins uh, this Wednesday, which is Ash Wednesday, and that's when the season begins, and then it continues on up until Easter Sunday. So we will celebrate, we will commemorate, we will learn together about this special season as we enter in. Also a reminder after church, those who would like to come and pray, you're always invited to pray for our country, our nation, to pray as God's Word tells us to. Um, and they meet right now in the, in the cry room nursery right here in the sanctuary. So they just do that right after church. You're more than welcome to pop in and, and pray. So now... I'm going to ask you to stand together. I want you to receive this blessing this morning, and we're going to go enjoy uh, the rest of this day together. May God bless you today with his great love in your life so that you can bless and love others. So go forth in love today, and this we ask in the name of the one who is love, Jesus Christ. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Have an awesome day and happy Valentine's.